VO2 max is really a, a measure of our cardio respiratory fitness. How much oxygen can we utilize uh, you know, per milliliter, per minute, per kilogram of, of body weight? You know, we use we use oxygen, of course, to produce ATP, to produce energy. And the higher our cardiorespiratory fitness, the higher our VO2 max. And when we go out and look at a, a population of, let's say, 50 or 60 year olds, there's a couple studies now that have, have looked at this and stratify people based on their VO2 max, their cardiorespiratory fitness, and you can put people into buckets, you know, low, below average, average, above average, uh, um, elite, for example. And you can then monitor these people and, and the, the two studies I'm thinking of monitored for between seven and 10 years. And you look at the risk of, of dying during that period. Compared to people that have low cardiorespiratory fitness, a low VO2 max, people in the elite category are five times less likely to die during that follow-up period. We're not asking everyone to be elite athletes here. What I find incredibly promising and empowering is that just going from low to average will half your risk of death and cardiovascular disease. Mm. And researchers have looked at you know, what it would take to do that, to get from low to average. And you know, you'd be shocked. It's, it's in line with what the recommendations are to do 150 minutes a week of, of moderate intensity exercise. In those studies, tracking people's VO2 max and evaluating the association with longevity or disease prevention, I have to wonder about confounding variables because if somebody has a superior or optimal VO2 max, they're probably practicing a whole battery of other healthy lifestyle um, habits within the construct of their life. Uh, so how do you isolate VO2 max in relationship to longevity and disease prevention outside of the influence of those other habits? Uh, this is the same problem that really any observational study has. You know, how, how do you get a, a clear view of the variable of interest to see what the effect of that is on the outcome that you're looking at, in this case, mortality or, or premature death? And what researchers use is called a multivariate analysis. So they have a statistical model which accounts for differences between those different groups, low, below average, average. There probably is differences in smoking incidents. There's probably differences in alcohol consumption, BMI. All of these things can get factored into that model. Now, I will say one of the things I've pushed back on these studies previously on is that there doesn't seem to be any adjustment for diet quality. You know, and mm. as you rightly pointed out, people with a high VO2 max- They're paying attention to what they're eating. They're probably eating yeah. a healthier diet. So can we say that the five times lower risk of premature death is, is purely based on the VO2 max? Probably not. There's some residual confounding in there and there's some other attributes of their life that are influencing that. But I think there's enough signal to, to say that it matters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. VO2 max was something I had previously thought in my youth was a genetic predisposition. There are certain people who are born with a crazy VO2 max. They end up becoming these amazing elite athletes. But in truth, VO2 max is malleable through lifestyle changes, you can influence and increase your mm -hmm. VO2 max. So and this is to disabuse anybody mm -hmm. who's like walking around with that myth in their head. Right, and there's some, I think I understand where that's come from because there's great debate. You, if you speak to endurance athletes and coaches that have been in the space for a long time, they'll talk about you know, case studies where people have increased their VO2 max by 40 or 50%. And then you read the literature and you know, quite often they'll say, you, know, you can probably increase VO2 max by about 10%. But 
we have to appreciate that often in these studies where you're looking at shifting VO2 max, there's a time limit. It might be a six-week intervention or an eight-week intervention. And usually it's isolating specific modalities. So it'll be comparing a high-intensity protocol with a moderate. It's not comparing you know, or looking at mm -hmm. multimodal interventions and then looking over the, the long term. So I think that's where you you see that discrepancy between the research and what people in the endurance community perhaps have seen. Obviously, we could do a three-hour podcast on VO2 max alone and the interventions that are going to move the needle in terms of improving it and drill down and all the various training protocols and philosophies behind them. That is not this podcast. Suffice it to say, VO2 max is an important lever in terms of overall well-being and longevity and disease prevention. This is one of the 10 truths. We're gonna try to move the needle over this 12 week period through these interventions, but you gotta test. How does one test for their VO2 max? That in and of itself is, um, has spawned a thousand uh, Reddit threads <laughs> about mm -hmm. how to figure this out. So in the most simplistic terms, obviously blood pressure, we know how to test that. ApoB, we're gonna get a blood test. How is somebody gonna figure out what their VO2 max is? There's a bunch of, of different ways. There's a, the direct, direct way where you go into a lab and you're connected to a machine and you're either on a treadmill or on a bike. That's going to be the most accurate way to determine your VO2 max. Proper lactate test, mm -hmm. lactate threshold test. And I did one of those recently with, with DexaFit who we've actually partnered with here as well. So within the PDF, people can find some inf information out about them. Um, so you can go in and you can do it that way. But I wanted to make this challenge as accessible as possible for everyone and not everyone's going to go in and, and mm -hmm. do a VO2 max treadmill test. Um, or, or Although if you have access to one of those labs and you can afford it, I would highly suggest it. I mean, I was doing this super regularly when I was training for all of these races, and it's quite revealing in terms of where you think you are with your fitness versus where you actually are. And some of the findings I think you'll discover are quite counterintuitive because it is extremely precise. If you can't do that, go ahead. Sorry, I interrupted you. I went on my own tangent there. I, I'm, I'm telling you not to do it. I'm all I'm doing it myself. So Should I know. We start? We're, keep, Should we we're start? keeping this on. <laughs> we're on the highway. We're on the super highway here, Simon. We're chugging along. We're doing good. Keep it going. I feel like how do we do this? How do we do the VO2 test at home, man? Come you, on. You've set a precedent. Yeah. Tangents are completely acceptable. So you can you can do a beep or a shuttle test. This has been done in studies where they've looked at. Uh, did you ever do a, a beep test or a shuttle no. test at school? No, what is that? So, I know that's part of this whole thing. I have no idea what that is. I, I just like <laughs> run slow really far. Uh, I, all this running back and forth yeah. and all the high intensity stuff, this is a new mm. world to me. There's a lot of people listening right now that are having flashbacks and are thinking, oh no. The beep test was the, the thing at school that you tried to get out of. So you're you, running back and forth in the gym, picking up the erasure. You set the, up yeah. you set up two cones, twenty meters apart, which is give or take. I, I think it's sixty five foot, right? And there's a, a beep, and you're running to the beep. You have to get between the two cones before the beep, and that beep gets prog progressively quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. So the amount of time now that you can rest at each end is getting shorter and shorter until you get to a point where you're sprinting from one to the other. And ultimately, if you miss one beep, you have the opportunity to make it back to the other end and you can stay in the game. But if you miss two beeps, you fall short, you're out. And at that point, you will have a reading like level nine shuttle three. And we have a, a table. So this is one of the other assets that people will get with the challenge that tells you with, with a very, the, the correlation coefficient between this shuttle test and VO2 max is 0.92. So it's a pretty strong correlation. So it tells you with 
a, a fairly high level of, of confidence what your VO2 max is. And, you know, from there, then you can put that VO2 max mm. straight into the calculator. And I assume in the materials for the challenge, you have details about the beep interval and all of that? Like, is there like an app on your phone? Like, how do you do this at home? Like, how, what do I, oh, you're just, he just handed me a piece of paper. So the protocol is completely laid out. We, we mentioned the app. There's, there's various apps you can download. They're free. I recommend connecting the app up to s- some type of speaker so it's loud enough so that you can hear it. And it's as simple as just following the beep. And at, at each stage, the app tells you level one, shuttle one, level one, shuttle two, and so that when you eventually get to your limit, you've been listening, you know what level and shuttle you're exactly. up to. Exactly, okay, I love it. So it's basically a test of failure, with, which is the same as what you would do in a lab on a treadmill or on a stationary mm-hmm. bike. Right, but you can do it on a basketball court, any flat surface. And you don't even need a heart rate monitor. Is heart rate part of this? Nope. It's just you're at your level. Where, wherever you reach failure, that's gonna dictate where mm-hmm. you're at. And then that gets calculated in terms of your age mm-hmm. and what else, like does your body weight factor into that or just age, age? and gender. Age and gender. So you just need a flat, hard or, or firm surface, your runners, joggers, and the app there's many that you can find that are free to pace you. That's all you need. 